Hello, welcome back to TCG Dreamland. Today we're doing the Battle of the Ultra Premium Collections. So, these are the two most recent Ultra Premium Collections. And I was just thinking, you know, maybe it's the holidays that you're maybe getting one of these for yourself or someone you like. Or maybe just because there's good deals on product this time of year. You might be picking up some for your sealed collection. So, we're going to go through all of the contents of both of these. And I'll tell you what's good, what's bad, which one I think would possibly be better if you were keeping it sealed long term. So we'll start off with the older one, the Charizard here. So open this bad boy up. First things first, you get with this one is a playmat. Now, while the playmat is really cool, I will say that it is not a full-sized standard playmat. So that is something to consider. It is a very cool-looking playmat with a Charizard VMAX. Very cool, but like I said, not full standard sized playmat. Now the thing that's cool about this one is it has the drawers. If you remember some of the older Ultra Premium collections, they have these cool drawers in them. Now, oh, that's weird. The, uh, so here's your metal damage counters. Very nice. Here is, it's missing a coin. There's a metal poison and burn counter. Um, well, I guess it's not a counter, it's a, yeah, I don't... Oh, here it is. It was in a different... <laughs> it went all the way over into the next little drawer. Interesting. That happens a lot with these, just in case you were wondering. So you got your, your cool metal poison and burn condition markers. You've got the cool drawers, which is cool with this one. You've got promos. Where are... Are they all in here? They're all in the same packet, I guess. Let's open this up. So these promos were notorious for having horrible quality control. So let's take a look at these. Charizard V. All right, Charizard V. This one's actually looking pretty good on the front. Let's take a look at the back. Oh, there's a little nick right there. And the back centering is okay. A couple corners have nicks. So as you can see, these were notorious for having bad quality control. And these are definitely not perfect. Big nick on that corner there. Centering a little bit off. But that one's actually not terrible. And then your V-Star. So pro of this Ultra Premium Collection is that it's Charizard, which people love. And there's a V-Star, V-Max, and V. All very cool, all exclusive to this product. So that's the first big plus with this one. You also have this exclusive Charizard V-Max coin. Which way is it going? Oh, there it is. There, that's right side up, I think. I'm going to take it out of the thing, actually. Oh, man, it broke out the side again, of course. All right, Charizard coin. It's kind of hard to see, but very cool. Metal Charizard coin. All right, now the pack selection. This is one of the negatives about this, is the pack selection. It is not a single set. It is packs from all of the year two and most of the year three sets, I think. So, of course, you've got your plastic marker, your plastic V-Star marker. They never made a metal V-Star marker. Very disappointed about that. All right, I'm just going to put these things back in there for now. So, drawers. Very cool. So if you're keeping something, if you want to use this as a card storage box, the Charizard one would definitely be the way to go. Because, as we'll see in a few minutes here, the 151 Ultra Premium Collection does not have drawers. So, 
We've got two Lost Origin. We'll put them in chronological order. Three Astral. Three Brilliant Stars. Three Fusion. We've got... Yeah, three Fusion. We've got three Evolving Skies. One Vivid. One Darkness Ablaze. Interesting. All right, so Darkness Ablaze, Vivid... And then three each of Evolving Skies, Fusion Strike, Brilliant Stars, and Astral Radiance. And then two Lost Origin. So you get a nice smattering of packs with the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. We'll do the packs at the end. We'll do packs for both Ultra Premium Collections at the end. How about that? All right, so... That was the Charizard one. Now let's see what you get in the Mew one. The Scarlet and Violet 151. Alright, so this one very different on the inside. Let me move the camera up a little so you can see that. That's how the promos come in this one. As you can see, this does not have the drawers like the other one. Also, the metal card is just like in there, not protected at all, which is kind of sucky. All right, so you get this nice little plastic carrying thingy. All right, I'm just gonna toss the box aside for now. Playmat. So, first thing I want to mention, playmat. This one, the Mew playmat, is a full-sized standard playmat. And in addition to that, look at the edge on it. It's got a stitched edge. Very nice quality. Very nice playmat. It's a little bit more plain, but it is definitely very high quality. Scarlet and Violet 151. Mew on that side. Very high quality playmat and full standard size. Now, let's look at promos. So you get a Mewtwo promo, Black Star promo. It's not textured or anything, and it's got the regular silver border. And then you got the Mew EX promo. This was the special illustration rare that they took out of the regular set and made it a Black Star promo in English. In Japanese, these are actually just in the set. And then you've got your metal version of Mew EX, which is in the standard set, but this is a metal one. So very cool. It's kind of interesting. There's a blue doesn't go all the way to the edge on top. So there is some quality control issues with these as well, but very cool. So you get three promos at each, but one of them is metal with the Mew. You've got some stuff here. Um, I don't think there's anything really well, I'll open it up. Why not? We're going in depth on the contents because that's kind of the point of this video. If you're just looking for the packs, you can skip to the end. So, not a metal coin, but a jumbo plastic shiny coin of Mew. Very cool. You've got pink damage counters instead of metal damage counters. Your burn and poison are just the regular plastic ones that you can get in ETBs. So a little lower quality for some of those things. And then this deck box, which the Charizard one did not have a deck box. It's a decent quality. It's plastic. Decent quality. It has a Velcro closure, if you can see in there. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic because the first time I tried to do that, it took me like a minute. Like literally a minute. So very cool. Oh, I totally forgot to show these with the Charizard one. They were just sitting on the desk over here. So, sleeves. Oh, does... The Mew one does not have sleeves, do they? No, that's... No sleeves in there. So, packs. Whole ton of packs. How many? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16 packs of Scarlet and Violet 151. So, 
Let me just do a little recap. Both of them had standard play mats, or not, not standard play mats. Both of them had play mats. The Charizard one is not standard size. The Mew one is standard size. The Charizard one had metal versions of all of the damage counters, coins, condition markers, things like that. The Charizard one had a pack of sleeves, whereas the Mew has a deck box. They each have three promos. However, the Mew has a metal card as one of the promos. And then, obviously, the packs are way different. The Mew has 16 151 packs. And this has, I didn't even count these, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16. Also 16, but it's a smattering of regular Sword and Shield sets for the Charizard. So let's start with, we'll save 151 for last because that's a very recent set. All right, these have a pack trick, don't they? Crap, I'm totally going to forget. It's three energy, right? And then two is how I do them. All right, so skipping the commons and stuff. I'm going to skip the commons. Combuskin, Pokemon Breeders Nurturing, Gotharita, Snubble, Hippowdon. There's nothing from our one dab pack. Now Vivid Voltage. Rainbow Chonkachu, maybe? Where's the code? Whoops. Showed you the barcode by accident. All right. It looked like there was a hit. I kind of showed the border of it. So there are amazing rares also in this set. Pincurchin, Telescopic Sight. We've got a Talon Flame. All right. Oh, and we had an amazing rare. <laughs> I messed up. I shouldn't have said the F word. Whoops. There might be kids watching this. It's the difference between Pokemon and Magic. So we had double hit pack with our Vivid Voltage. All right, Evolving Skies. Man, the packs are like, oh, not the same in this. All right. I will sort bulk later. Avalug. Crystal Cave, Boost Shake, Altaria. Next Evo. These packs open right up. Oh, giving away our hit by accident. Yeah, definitely don't miss having to do the pack trick. All right, Sharpedo and bada bing. Bada boom, Stormy Mountains. Very cool, Gold Secret Rare. Not really the hit you want from Evolving Skies, but that's a pretty rare hit to get. But you know, just because it's rare doesn't mean it's expensive. It's all about supply and demand. No one wants a Gold Stormy Mountain and it's not worth anything. All right. Whoops, energy and then two, there we go. Gordy, Snow Leaf Badge, Double the Avalug, and an Altaria. All right, on to Fusion Strike. This, stri this set has actually come up in value a lot. I remember when this set came out, these boxes were like well under $100. And they're like $150 now for a sealed booster box. Sydney, Diggers B, Grap Locked, Luxio, and Chandelure. All right, we're getting a good amount, good amount of hits here. All right, Prime Ape, Shauna, Mantine, and a Melmetal Hollow. Remember, hollows weren't guaranteed back in Sword and Shield. Power Tablet, Schoolgirl, Adventurer's Discovery, Steelix, Acelgore. Now we're on to Brilliant Stars. 
could get a Charizard or an Arceus out of this set. Cleansing gloves. Ooh, a Jolteon. Very cool. Trainer gallery. Now that we're in year three of Sword and Shield, there's trainer gallery for all the sets. Friends in Galar, Weavile, Fracture, Heatran, double. Double the Heatran, double the fun. So, let me talk about which one I think is better because I don't have anything else to talk about right now while I'm opening these packs. I personally think that some of the things that come in the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection are better. And I very much like the fact that it has drawers. Agron. And I messed up the pack trick. All right, Astral Radiance. So there are things I like about the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. I don't like the pack selection, however. I like the Celebrations and the 151 Ultra Premium Collections, where that's the set that's associated with that product. The product is associated with a particular set. So I like that more. Phalanx, Astral Radiance, nice. Getting a lot of hits out of this. Out of 16 packs, we've gotten seven hits. It's a lot of hits out of 16 packs. So I like the Charizard one has the metal damage counters. It has the metal coin. It has the metal burn and poison. So those things I like. It has the drawers. Machamp. Cool. Wow, we're getting a lot of hits, actually. All right. Last Astral, and then on to Lost Origin. Lost Origin has that Giratina in it. Dark Patch. Pile of Swine. Rowlet and Hisuian Basque Legion. Cascoon. Got a Galarian Stunfisk and Gliscor. Last pack. Let's see if we can get a hit from Lost Origin. Try to not give anything away here. Square it up real nice before I turn them over. All right, Panic Mask, Dotler, Ghastly Reverse, and a Volo Hollow Rare. So that was our Charizard Ultra Premium Collection packs. Now, let me move some of this bulk to the side. I just kind of threw it all in a pile. It's not even like stacked or anything. All right, so had some decent hits. A couple trainer galleries. We had four V's, a gold secret rare and an amazing rare. But I wouldn't say anything really to write home about out of those. Now, 151. Now I do want to talk about 151 in general. I personally was a bit disappointed in this set. I think they could have done a way better job with this set. No pack trick for these ones. Cloister, Grabber, Dugong Reverse, Gloom Reverse, and a Dragonite. Yeah, they could have done so many more special illustration rares and so many more illustration rares in this set and then just made 
the hit rate way higher. I think it would have made the fun, it, it would have made the set way more fun to open. It would have made the set have more value in it. You know, it just would have been better in basically every aspect. It would have sold better even. You know, funner to open, more value in singles, more value in sealed. People would be buying it up like crazy. So 151, I was a bit disappointed in. So I guess what it comes down to really is your preference. Do you like the accessories that the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection comes with? Or do you want to open a whole bunch of 151 packs and also have some not bad but not great, <clears throat> excuse me, not bad but not great accessories? The fact that all the accessories in the Scarlet and Violet 151 Ultra Premium Collection, they're all plastic. It's a little bit disappointing considering every other single Ultra Premium Collection has had metal you know, accoutrements. Oh, cool. Hollow energy. So, yeah, they went a little... So the playmat, I will say the playmat is probably the one edge that I would give the 151 Ultra Premium Collection. The Charizard playmat is disappointing with the fact that it's not actually a full-sized playmat. That was very disappointing. That's a lesson that they learned, and with this one, they have not only a full-sized playmat, but it also has a stitched edge. It's a very nice quality playmat. That's the one thing that I would definitely say, hands down, the 151 Ultra Premium Collection has over the Charizard one. Got a Vulpix, Nidoking, Moltres, another Hollow Energy. Hit rate for this set, not great. Considering it's a special set and not a standard set, I very much would have liked to have a higher hit rate. But because the set is so small, they were not able to do that really. So, yeah, it's not to be a Debbie Downer, but the set, they should have put way more special illustration rares in. They should have put way more illustration rares in. I mean, it's a set that was supposed to be catering to the old school fans. It's the original 151 Pokemon. And I don't know why they wouldn't have just put in a whole ton of special illustration rares and illustration rares of like all of the fan favorite Pokemon out of the first 151 and then just go crazy with hit rates. It's like if you're pulling something out of every other pack, that's because that was the whole thing with Shining Fates and Celebrations. That's one of the things that made Shining Fates and Celebrations fly off the shelves was because you got a hit in every other pack and it was just so fun to open. People were buying it up like crazy. If you look at the singles for both of those sets, Celebrations and, uh, what was it? Shining Fates. The singles for both of those sets, the value was absolutely horrible because people were opening so much product because it was so fun to open the value of the singles just collapsed for both of those sets. Celebrations, the sealed product, surprisingly, is still high because people just love opening it still. Um, oh, nice. Dragonair Illustration Rare. First nice hit. Let's move these over a bit. I'm going to just stack up the Vs and stuff. All right, so let's make some room for our Scarlet and Violet hits. So this video is quite long, but I was kind of expecting that considering 
I was going to go in very much depth about all of the contents of both of them. Machamp, Leftovers, Electrode. I mean, as you can see, there's 16 packs. We've probably gone through like 10, 9 or 10 packs, and we've only gotten three hits. Tauros, Caterpie, Aerodactyl, Marowak. Yikes. I mean, out of 16 packs, I would hope we get a special illustration rare. Poliwhirl, Ammonite, Mewtwo. Three packs remaining. Go straight to the reverses. Pikachu, Articuno, and Jolteon. Another Hollow Energy. We've got Haunter, Ekans, and a Mew EX. Last pack. Magnemite. Starmie. And, ooh, nice. A Charizard EX Full Art. Very nice. So we did end up getting five hits out of... Our 151 Ultra Premium Collection. We had a lot more hits than that out of our Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. Very nice. I think these ones were really the only noteworthy ones out of the Charizard. And then I think only these two really for the Mew Ultra Premium. Now, final thoughts. Final thoughts here. Let me get out some of this stuff again. Move the hits aside. So this is basically all the stuff you get with the Mew. Um, where did I put the promos? Here they are. Underneath all the packs. The pack wrappers. All right, so let me get these out. And let me do a little recap. All right, so bada bing, bada boom. First things first, they both have play mats. Doing the big roundup at the end here. Both have play mats. Very nice play mats. Charizard one, cooler looking, but it is not standard. I would say the edge goes to 151 on the play mat. Now let's look at promos. All three of the promos for the Charizard are regular cards. They are hit or miss on the quality control. These ones weren't terrible, actually. I've seen some really bad ones. Um, so quality control is hit or miss on those. These, I'd say the quality control is mostly good for these ones. And you get the Metal Mew card, the Metal Mew EX. Of course, you can see quality control on the Metal card is also hit or miss. So there's the playmats and the promos. They each have a playmat and three promos. So that's kind of preference there. Charizard or Mew. It's your preference there. Now, things that they come with. All of the little accessories, the coin, the burn and damage, the burn, uh, burn poison, damage, counters, and coin are all metal. And you get a cool little drawer storage box with Charizard. 
With Mu, they're all plastic, as you can see. And I mean, it's not that it isn't cool looking. It's still a cool looking coin. But you get a you get all plastic and you get a deck box and you get sleeves with this one. So I'm not a big fan of the red border on those sleeves. So, you know, I hadn't really thought about it. I would give the edge actually to the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. Now that I'm looking at all the contents, I think the metal, all of the metal bits and pieces that it comes with are worth it. I like the metal, all of the, the higher quality stuff there. I would say probably what it really comes down to is do you like Charizard or Mew more? Because those are the promos that they come with. And then also a major difference would be the playmat. So the Mew playmat is better than the Charizard one. But the Charizard comes with the cool storage box. It has these drawers inside the box. And that is really cool. And then it just, you know, do you like Charizard or Mew more? So there you go. I personally would probably go Charizard if I had to buy one or the other. Now, investment wise, I would say investment wise... The 151, because it's associated with the set. It's the Ultra Premium set. It's the Ultra Premium collection that's for the set. I think it's probably... If you're going to invest in 151, probably go with Ultra Premium collections. Whereas the Charizard Ultra Premium collection was just like its own one-off product. So... Maybe investment-wise... 151 but as a product if i were to open it i would go with charizard so that that's my final that's my verdict but hopefully you can you know take all the information i've given you here and make you up make up your own mind for whatever you want to open or what do you whatever you want to get you know one of your friends or family or something so thank you very much for watching i hope you got something out of this make sure to subscribe if you like this type of video. If you want to see more videos like this, you can put that down in a comment and I'll see you guys in the next video.